What's up, guys? Uh, ben Pollock here with Luke Carroll. Uh, we're granite and iron metal athletes. I'm a powerlifter. He's a professional bodybuilder. We want to talk about the difference between arm training between the two because, as you can see, Luke's arms are a lot <laughs> fucking bigger than mine, which sucks. But uh, a lot of that has to do not only with the way we train, with the way we eat, all that stuff. Um, we want to give you guys some, some insights into that. So... Lee, do you want to start and kind of explain how you approach arm training? Yeah. Um, so you, typically I'll set up my arm training. I'll do back in the beginning of the week, and you get quite a bit of arm training through your back, through deadlifting, through lat pull down, and stuff like that. You get quite a bit. So then I set up my actual arm day at the end of the week uh, paired with shoulders so that it's like double the volume without actually hitting it fully twice, two workouts. And then um, I like to do about eight to 12 working sets. And if I find that I get on a movement that I really like, like yesterday we did um, uh, easy bar curls and I think I did like seven sets just because it was having, you know, it was a great feeling, great bump. The bar was the right width for me and everything. So I did about seven sets on that. And then I did what I call a pinwheel curl. It's kind of like a variation of a hammer curl. And uh, I think I did about four or five on that, and that's pretty much pretty much what I did. So, uh, are those kind of typical exercises that you would use when you're trying to pick a movement that you want to use to train arms? How would you go about, you know, choosing that movement? I pick what is the most comfortable for me. Okay. Um, I can't do straight bar, just the how my arms are, are shaped. I just can't do them that comfortably. I can do some, but it just it hurts my wrists. Um, you know, like alternating, I never really felt great on alternating. Maybe I'll throw a couple in here and there, but it's not my primary. So pretty much I just stick to those as my primary. And what I notice a lot of people do in bodybuilding that kind of is a mistake is they'll start to throw things in just because they think they need variety. You know, you don't really need a huge amount of variety. Like people thinking they're like overtraining, they're probably just not really training enough or correctly, or they're probably throwing in too many different types of, of movements. So figure out what works for you, what you get a good stretch on, what you get a good pump on, what's difficult but not awkward and just stick to that. So as a power lifter, I think there are a lot of similarities. There are also a lot of differences. So first of all, when I'm training arms, I do very, very little for biceps. You know, Luke was talking, I assume on your back day, you're hitting buys, and then again on shoulder day. Yeah. Um, so getting two days a weekend, man, I might throw in one or two sets of buys just randomly. Uh, but they're not gonna do, they'll do a lot for elbow health. You know, if you have tendonitis problems as a power lifter, they're not gonna do a lot to increase your your strength on the squat, bench press, and deadlift. And, you know, I don't like to say this, but there, there is a risk that you do too much bicep, you're gonna fatigue that muscle, then you're at a risk of tearing one on a deadlift or something like that. So a lot, a lot lower volume, I think, for biceps and for triceps, honestly. I will train triceps twice a week. One day for me is really light, and the other day tends to be a little bit heavier, so one day I'll still I'll be working kind of the same rep range as you. The other rep, other day I'll probably be working into a lower rep range, doing something like, uh, you know, sets of five with a, with a more compound exercise, something like a JM press or close grip bench press as opposed to those isolation movements. But I think the bigger thing is that I'm not, even on a on a day when I'm training triceps, I'm not doing seven or eight sets, man. Definitely not. I'm doing, <laughs> you know, three or four tops. Um, and so that volume is a lot, lot lower. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing, I think, you know, you're, you're going for that contract and stretch, trying to really fill the muscle with blood, trying to move it through a full range of motion, all that good stuff. And I'm, I'm more concerned with really targeting the parts of my tricep that are going to help my bench press. Mm -hmm. So for me... Like bar speed and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So like the long head of the tricep for me is not going to do a whole lot for my bench press. Whereas kind of this medial head on the outside, that's really going to help me lock out at the top. So I try and really target that with things like elbows out extensions and uh, even dumbbell kickbacks, honestly. Stuff that, you know, you generally think of as lighter isolation movements, but that are really getting at those... Uh, those movement goals, right? Trying to help the bench, not so much concerned about what type of pump I'm getting, what type of contraction or stretch or any of that stuff. Typically on um, 
triceps, the way that I'll work them, I'll start with a, what I call a power movement, either some kind of heavy dip, dip machine, or a uh, weighted dip, or a narrow grip. Like you said, I'll do you know, maybe four sets on that, and keep the rep range in the 10 to 12, and then I'll do more of a pump, which is like a tricep push down or something like that. I don't really like tricep extensions or skull crushers. They just give me tendonitis immediately, so I just stay away from them. <laughs> you know, that's another thing I, I get a lot of people asking me, like, "Oh, how do I get rid of tendonitis and this and that?" And I'm like, "Don't do things that cause it." <laughs> just absolutely. <man. laughs> I think that's probably the biggest similarity. You got to train the stuff that's not hurting your body. If you're beating yourself up while you're training, you're not gonna be able to recover efficiently. You're not gonna get stronger. You're not gonna get bigger. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be a bad life. So yeah. Well, thanks, man. Yep. I think that was really informative. It was sure. great to be able to train with you. Uh, you guys make sure to watch the uh, footage of the differences between us training, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.